What's up internet, my name is Michael Cook, this is Blue Giant Media, and we're here to connect through gaming. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Reef by Emerson Matsuchi and published by Next Move Games. We're going to take a look at the rules overview, we're going to get a feel for how the game plays, and we'll come back and I'll let you know what I do like, what I don't like, and who may or may not like Reef. All right, so here we have Reef set up for two players. As you can see, their, their setups don't have to be identical. You just have to have one of each color. Uh, the first game, it does recommend having you play with everybody starting the same, though. But you don't have to do that. So each of you is going to have two cards in your hand. And we'll go ahead and not keep them secret because we're playing for both players. So now, what you're going to be able to do on your turn is one of two things. You're either going to be drawing a card and adding it to your hand. Your hand could have no more than four cards. And then the other option is to play a card from your hand. And whenever you play a card from your hand, you are going to place the coral reef pieces that you see on the top half of the card. And then you are going to score points based off of what is on the bottom half of the card. So let's go ahead and start over here with this player. Uh, maybe they decide See, this says that they're going to get three points for every stack of coral that is four high, no matter what color is on top. This is scoring three points for every green and purple that are next to each other, regardless of height. So, we can try... We can try and build up some of these, but maybe first we're going to want to take some of these. So maybe we go ahead and... We grab... What the heck, we'll grab this one. There wasn't anything especially useful there. So now this player, as you see, you turn over one on the top here. Now if this player happens to want to take the card that's on the top, it's not part of the supply yet. So you can put one on top of whichever one has the lowest point value, if they're the tie that you put and you choose whichever one. And that allows you to take the card that's on deck there. So then this player could go ahead and maybe they decide that Maybe they decide that they want this card. That reveals another one here. This player, they are eyeballing purples and greens, so now they decide that they want this one. That brings one of these out. And then, let's see here. Let's say this player takes that one. And I forgot to flip one over before. So now each player has four cards in hand. So they cannot draw a card, each player. They're going to have to start playing cards. So now this player is going to go ahead and play this card. What they'll do then is they're going to take greens, and they can place them anywhere they want. They can stack them on top of things, but they don't have to. They can go ahead and stack like this, and let's see, maybe they decide to go like that. Eh, we'll go ahead and go like that. We want to stack some higher. All right, then they look at the bottom half of the card. They do not have any sets of yellows like that shape, so they're not going to get four points. Then it'll come over here to this player. They're going to start maybe trying to build up towards doing this right here. So maybe they start by taking this card and they play it. They're going to take two reds, and maybe they eyeball this right here. They think to themselves that maybe they want to make stack of three with red on top. Then we'll come over here. Now this player, maybe they decide that they want to, to go ahead and play this card. So now they're going to get a red and a purple. Now they are allowed to stack them like this and then score three points if they wanted. So let's go ahead and say we did that. Then over here, this player is going to keep on trying to set the table a little bit. So they're going to t play this one, get a couple of yellows, and they're going to place them right there. And this doesn't matter too much. Go like that. And then we have one stack that is three high of with red on top. So we'll go ahead and score four points. And you'll go back and forth playing like this until the one of the different sections uh, or types of coral has run out. 
However, it can also end in the rare case that the deck runs out. If the deck runs out, the game ends immediately. If one of these different uh, types of coral runs out, then you finish the current round. Then everybody who has cards left in their hand will get to score points for those. But the catch is, say this player had played this card. You see that you have purple and green, purple and green. This doesn't specify height. Now you can't use the same color twice and say that's a purple and green, that's a purple and green, that's a purple and green, that's a purple and green. The orientation doesn't matter as much because as long as you can turn the card so that it works, then it's good. But because they have two separate sets of this pattern, they do get to score this twice, which would give them six points. However, if they had waited until the end of the game and this was in their hand, they could only score it once. So during the game, you can score the same card multiple, multiple times, maybe even four or five times. But at the end of the game, each of the cards that are in their hand will only score them one, or one time, and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. Okay, so now that you have a pretty good idea of how to play through Reef, I'm gonna let you know what I like about the game. First off, I'm not super big on abstract games usually, and there's something about this one that's just really pleasing to me. I can't quite put a finger on it. I think it's just because of the spatial element of it that's 3D. Um, I think one of the best things about it is the cards. How you have this constant struggle between wanting to play a card that gives you the pieces that you want and a card that scores the things that you want. And you can never quite do both at the same time unless you do a lot of forward planning. I'm not usually big on really strategic, like have to think 10 moves ahead kind of game. This game, I think it sits right in the middle of a tactical and strategic game where you really do have to think a good three or four turns ahead possibly but you don't necessarily have to think 15 turns ahead like you, do, you know, like maybe would have to do in chess. So I think it sits right on the edge of having to think too far ahead for my taste. So I really like that. The theme is pleasant. The pieces are really just, it has a toy factor to it. My kids, when they want to play this game, usually after a couple rounds of play, my four-year-old starts just playing and stacking the pieces and she just wants to see what colors she can get the most of uh, and then my five-year-old she'll score the cards a couple times and then she moves on to eventually just kind of wanting to make patterns or things like that so it has that toy factor which kids can just enjoy playing and I think adults there's there's a, a weight to the pieces that I think it's just really satisfying um, other than that I and I just love and I know I've already said it but I love that interplay between Okay, well I could play this card now and it would score a decent amount of points, or I could play this card and it doesn't give me any points now, but in two turns it's going to set me up perfectly to do this card, this card, this card, and I love that puzzle. It's small enough that you can wrap your mind around, at least I can wrap my mind around it comfortably, but deep enough that I've got to think about it and I can really weigh the, the options and the possibilities things that I don't necessarily like about the game is that even though there is that really fun puzzle, I find it just doesn't get to the table as much as I would like because I just find myself wanting to play other games. If someone were to say, oh man, you got Reef, I'd love to play Reef, I would never turn it down. But when I look at my wall of games, I just find myself not gravitating towards going, ooh, we should play Reef. You know, it's a good lunchtime game. I love taking it to work at lunchtime, I've played it a couple times, but it just hasn't grabbed my attention for a game night going, yes, Reef, that's what we're doing tonight. So that's not, I know that's not necessarily a con, but it's, hey, it's what I don't necessarily like about the game, is that it's some reason it just doesn't have something. So let's move on to who I think will like the game. If you are a fan of those types of games where you have to think ahead, I think that this will really appeal to you because you really have to think further ahead than, okay, what's best for me this turn? Because if you just do what's best for me this turn, you're not going to be as effective in the long run. You can get a few points every turn, but it won't necessarily add up unless you are planning ahead as far as where you're putting things, what you're trying to set up, what you're trying to create, what you've got in your hand, and what you want to play eventually. If you only look at what you've got now and what's worth the most points in your hand right now or what's worth the most points for what you can pick up, you're not going to be as effective. Now, if you like those abstract type games, 
I think that this one, it's different enough. The theme is there because you're building these coral reefs. It doesn't feel as abstract. So if you like those kind of puzzly type games, but maybe you're not usually super deep into the completely themeless abstract, th the theme is, it's loosely there, but it is tangible. You are building the coral reefs. So it does kind of justify itself. Now why you're scoring points for it, I don't know. But <laughs> I guess that's the abstract part of it, and the part where there's a little bit of a disconnect between theme and implementation. But on the whole, for abstract type games, this feels more like a thematic experience than a purely abstract puzzle. And I do think that that is going to appeal to some people who like puzzles but aren't too big on completely abstract games. Now who's not going to like this game is maybe if you tend to prefer games that are much more tactical. I know I tend to, but if you prefer a game where you can kind of only have to think two or three turns ahead, this might be just beyond where you might want to go, but I think that you'll still enjoy it enough, but you might not want to buy it. It might be a try not buy situation for you. Also, if you are a big fan of the strategic thing and you've heard me talking about strategy and you're going, yeah, that sounds good, it's not that strategic. So it kind of sits right in the middle where maybe the people who tend to be more strategic gamers and the people who might be a little bit more tactical gamers, both of them might say either that's too heavy or too light for me for what I really want to do. So you have to go into it knowing that this is not going to be the main course of an evening. It's not that deep. <laughs> it, it is deep. To me it's a satisfying amount, but you have to kind of decide where it is for you. If you're a you know, you're playing Brass and Steam and Key Flower and those types of games. Uh, this is, it might be a warm up for you. And if you are more into a Sushi Go and Ticket to Ride, this then this might be a, you know what, let's, uh, let's dig into Reef tonight. That might be your main course, but you're gonna have to weigh that a little bit for yourself and your own game group. All right, so let's go ahead and take the spotlight off of Reef by Emerson Matsuchi and published by Next Move Games. If you want to know more about Reef, you can take a look in the description section where I've got a setup and more in-depth playthrough of the game. And you can also find a link there to macronovagames.com where you can buy Reef and a whole bunch of other great games. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have any corrections, comments, or requests for videos to make in the future. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see and have a wonderful day.